Hello and welcome back. All right, so let's uh, finish the checkout process here. Let's see what how the process works so far. Okay. So here, if I add an item to the cart, let me just add this item, and let's go to the checkout. And here, I get to write my uh, address. And let me just enter some dummy info here. Okay. Home phone. Let me just put some random numbers and uh, some notes over here. Shipping order. Well, anyway, uh, whatever the uh, information is here, if we click continue this time, we have a summary of the information. Please confirm the information below and the order summary down here, which is awesome. And then we click on pay. So let's see what happens there. Pay. Oh, looky there. We actually do have a thank you page already made. Hmm. I, you know, I completely forgot about this page. Not gonna lie. Anyway, so we want a process between the previous page and this one where we actually um, ask the user to pay, to make a payment. So let's create that page right now. So it's up to you how many steps you want to create uh, at the end of the day. Let's, the user experience is what matters. So give your friends to test it out and they can give you feedback, etc, etc. So let me click back and see what happens. Ah, there we go. So we get a few errors here. Quite a lot of errors, actually. So let me see what's happening here. An unidentified array key post data. That's on checkout.php 139. So let's check what those errors are. So checkout.php in the controllers should be. Is it in the controllers though? Yeah, controllers 139. So down to 139, which is right here. Okay, so here it's saying um, session post data does not exist. Hmm. Understood. So what I will do is I'll just copy this and just put an is set in uh, if is set like that. And then that's when I put it connected here. Data orders. Okay, great. Let's see what other errors will be complained about if I refresh. Ah, there we go. So un undefined variable orders on line 26. Uh, this is checkout.summary. This is in the views, line 26. So let's go to views and check out dot summary there we go and line 26 there we go if is array orders so this is a common mistake let me duplicate this and put them and and then here just put is set it's always a good idea to check if something is set before we try to check whether it's uh, an array or not so please add items to the cart first back please add items to the cart first very good, very good. Okay, so at this point, the pay button on the, um, where is this? The summary, there is a pay button here. Where does that take us? Pay, right there. So there's a form post here where we actually submit the form. This is weird though. Okay. Oh, that's because the data is inside the, um, the session, actually. So once we do the submit, uh, then it means we have approved. That is all good. Okay, so it means if we go to the checkout now on the controllers here, where is that? Checkout.php. And this is the thank you where we want it to go but not so fast. This is where we are taking it, through there, and then we get to 
here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So instead of this, let's duplicate that and let's add one more step before we get to the thank you. And this step is going to be called uh, pay now. Pay now. Like so. So this one will be checkout.pay. Let's just say checkout.pay, like so. Uh -huh. And that's where we go from here. So thank you. Everything is written down. The data is saved. We unset the data and then we say pay. One moment. So what's happening is that at this point, the data is saved in our orders list. Only uh, table that remains is the payment table. So what we need to do is uh, give them the opportunity to uh, to pay. So let's just put pay here like so. And I will change that to uh, pay like that. Okay, so that's the controller, which is this one, and that is the function, pay. So pay now, checkout.pay, that's all good. But once the payment is done, then this thank you page will be viewed via the, uh, it's going to be checkout underscore thank you. Yes, yes. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. So this is uh, looking great. All we need now is the checkout.pay page. And how do we deal with that? Let's copy from the checkout.summary or maybe the checkout.thank you because it looks more compact. Let's see the summary version of this just for a moment here. Hmm. Interesting. How come this uh, thank you has none of this? Home checkout. I think the summary is better to copy. So let me copy that because it has these back buttons. Actually, at this point, the user should not be allowed to go back because it's too late at this point. The um, the summary, the, the, the order has already been saved. They just need to pay. So I think let's copy the thank you, copy that. Let's create a new file inside the eShop, uh, new file, paste, save. This file is going to be summary.pay.php. Dot dot save that, goody. Now we'll just say select a payment method below your order was successful no nope, not yet too soon what would you like to do next no nope. remove okay so right here is where we're going to put our order so let's come back to uh... now it is important here uh, let's see let me go back to the checkout.php now it is important here to know the details of what details uh, for example the uh, the amount etc etc how much they need to pay let me go back to shop view here because I want us to see the data that we need. First of all, we need a description. Okay, that's number one. And then the second thing we need is an amount, which is right here. And then what do we need? Total currency code value. I have no idea. Amount item total. I have no idea which of these two. Anyway, we can set it to the same amount. It doesn't really matter. And then the currency code for shipping. Okay, that's the shipping amount. And then... Uh, 
Okay, so what we need is a shipping and we need the amount and we need a description. So those are the three things that are very important. So if I come back to, um, first of all, what I will do is copy this. I have to remove this from this whole place. So remove the script tag, the script tag up to here and also the div here. So let me push this in a little bit. Get everything from here up to the script and cut that out like so. So that's everything from PayPal. And I'm going to go to checkout.pay. There we go. And I'm going to add it right here. So select a payment method below and I will put this there. Okay, great. So maybe I'll need a few break tags after this at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now here we need the data to be available to us. So how do we send this data? Let me go to, uh, where is this? Uh, the checkout, oh, checkout.php. I got confused there for a second. Okay, so the information is in the post data. That's the information that we saved. Uh, as you can see here, save order. This is the information that we got, we had. Now at this point, we are unsetting that information because the payment, uh, the payment, the order was actually saved here. So there's a choice to be made here. Do we unset the data here? Or do we, actually maybe what we can do is, let's set a different set of information here instead of this. So from post data here, what I will do is add to session again. So I'm just going to say session um, pay, maybe. I'll call it pay like that. Now it's up to you, you can uh, not remove this data. The reason why I'm, I'm unsetting this data here is because I don't want, after the uh, order is saved, I don't want them to be able to go back and start changing things again. Then they may end up creating a new order, which may confuse things. It's better they go back and start adding things again so that they know this is uh, something different if they cancel the payment. So it's entirely up to you what you wanna do. If you don't want to unset this, you cannot un you, you can do that and then unset it, uh, clear it once the payment is done on the thank you page there. So we can do that. Maybe we can unset the cart and leave this one alone for now so that we don't have to create a new variable. So maybe let's do that. So for now, I will leave this one out like this, but we're going to unset the cart. So if that uh, should work out well, okay, that's good. So let me copy this here and let's go to, once we get to pay here, checkout.pay, actually we don't even need to put anything here. We can just go to checkout.pay and see what information we can siphon from there. Now I'll go to save order here just to see how the information is received. So order class here, and there's save order, where is that? Save order, right there. So I'm looking for specific information, like, uh, let's see here. I want the shipping, the tax, um, what else? The, um, where is the description here? Home phone, shipping, uh, wait, what happened to the description? Nothing? Let me go back to the table here and look at orders. What exactly is saved here? Delivery address. Okay, so we are not actually saving a description, which is very interesting. Hmm. So we need to create that. Okay. Now the description will be an order number that we auto generate at this point. 
So we're going to generate it from reading from the database to see what the order number is there and then the ID number. And then from that, we create an order number for ourselves. So what I will do is I don't want to create it from here. I want it to already exist when I get to this point. So let me go back to checkout.php and let's see where this uh, session data is created from, post data. So I'm going to go just back, back to see. Okay, so data is equal to post data. We are just adding to it there, session, session. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, very good, very good. What's this one here? Index, okay. All right, so once we check in here, uh, let's add a to the post variable here, let's add one more thing, which is called description. So this will be auto-generated here. I don't want to add it from the uh, from um, the form because somebody can manipulate that. So I just want it to be auto-generated here. So I'll say post like this and say order ID like so is equal to like that. So order validate, all that is done. Once we we're done with the validation, let's add it there. And then we add this to the uh, situation and then we go to the summary. That is all good. So order ID is equal to, and let's just create a function that will do this for us. Get order ID like so. That should be enough. Okay. Get order ID, copy, save. So what we do now is let's go to the core and functions and inside functions, let's create that function right here. Okay, get order ID, very nice. Now in here, obviously I need the database connection. So let's, let me see where I have this database connection and read database read. So back where is functions? There we go. I'll do that. And then I'll come back and copy this as well. Copy functions and paste. Okay, so select all from orders. And then we say order by ID descending. This is important so that it gets the last record. And then we say limit one. But we don't need all the data, we just need the ID column like that. Okay, so here I'm going to have the an item called order is equal to, uh, let's say one, maybe, something like that, just in case we don't find anything here. And don't forget to put function here also. And then at this point, I'm going to add if is array if is array rows like so, then it means we did find a result. And so I'm just going to say order is equal to rows zero and then ID and then plus one like that because we need the next available number like so. Okay, so there we go, row zero ID plus one ID. And then at the very end, we say return order, whatever the order number is at that time. Okay, very nice. So now we have an order number here, that's very good. So in the next video, let's see how we can use that session data to populate the description here and other items.